Welcome to a new guide on this channel and on this occasion is the Octave Cat from Cherry Audio. This is not a review, it's a complete deep dive guide about this synth. Now everything on this guide is in chapters, so if you look at the description or the timeline you can jump to a section or skip the ones you don't want. Now if you like all of this please like and subscribe and if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee you can, everything is at the description. Right, so let's begin. This is a recreation of the cat, uh, first released in 1976. Now the panel is a little bit different from other synths, is a bit more performance based layout. For example, right here on the VCO section, you have controls for the LFO modulation and envelope and so on and so on. But you have all of this within the same block, which is going to be VCO1. So everything is kind of a, like mixed on the same spot. You have the uh, oscillator section, you know, the volume, the amplitude of the waveforms, then on the same spot, the modulations and, and everything else. You don't need to go to a different box and decide how much you're going to be doing for the VCO1 or the VCO2. And this layout is like this because it makes it easier to modulate or change params for the VCOs uh, because uh, everything is just, you know, on a single on a single spot on the same on the same place. Okay, so let's begin with what generates uh, sound, which is going to be the VCO1 and the VCO2. Right here at the bottom, it says audio level, and this is what decides which waveform you're going to be using. If I go all the way down on this, uh, on this uh, faders and I play something, nothing is going to come out. So you need to provide some amplitude, something. And whatever it is that you go, you're using right here, it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna give it to you. So right here we have a pulse. It's gonna give us a pulse. If I go down on this one and go up on this one, you can do a triangle and you can do a saw, and you also have a sub octave right here. Now this doesn't mean that you cannot blend the, the waveforms. Maybe I'm gonna be getting, you know, something like that. And then I'm just gonna go up on this one and maybe a little bit of a saw. And you just can create a nice little blend with all the waveforms. Now the VCO2 uh, works the same way. If I go up on this sub octave, I'm gonna be getting it. Same thing with the other ones. But you need to remember that you need to go up on the faders just to get, you know, sound or whatever waveform you wanna work with. Okay, so after you select your waveform, then you need to select your frequency. So you have a fine and you have a coarse. Now, if I play it, I'm gonna go to fine and this goes up a minor third or it goes down a minor third. This is what it does, right? Now, if you want to go back uh, to the original position, you can do Command or you can do Alt and just click it and it's going to go back uh, to the original position. But then you have the course control, which is, you know, super interesting. If I play something, let me play a low key. Notice that the light is on. This is because we are standing on an octave. It's going to be Z zero, right? Uh, as I go up, it's going to go off. So the light is going to let you know when you are up an octave, right? When I go to C1, it's gonna be up there, T2, and if I keep going up, you know, on each octave is gonna let us know that we are standing there. Now this is not the, you know, notice that we can go really down and we can use the oscillator number one as a modulation source. We're gonna talk about this in a minute. Now remember to do command or alt to go back to the original spot. It's gonna be that one. Now, the interesting part on this is going to be the keyboard control. If you're standing on semi or semi, it's going to be semitones, which is, you know, what, what we've been using. But then you have the on and you have the off. So if I go to on, it's going to sweep the whole range. So now you're not working on semitones. If I play it and keep moving up, notice that it says frequency. So now we are going on frequencies. And now we're not going semitones. Which is, this is like the default way, right? Okay, so if I, again, if I do Alt and go back, notice that the light goes on. So when you're close, if you're using on, if you're close to an octave, it's just gonna let you know, right? Okay, now then you have the off. We can use the VCO as a modulation source for the VCO number two. And this is why you have off. You can just turn it off and whatever key I'm, I'm gonna be playing a key, it doesn't matter which key I'm playing, right? It's only gonna be playing whatever frequency we select right here. So it's like a disconnecting the keyboard from the uh, from this oscillator. And this is again because we can go all the way down and use this as an LFO. 
And since the keyboard is not being tracked, we are not changing the frequency. It's a constant frequency. And this is again really useful when we use it as a modulator. Right, so I'm gonna go to new and start with a clean default patch. And just to get it out of the way, I want to show you this section. You have the glide, the octave, and then you have your bent. And now all of this is something pretty common that you get on a lot of synthesizers. You get your glide. If I play a key and I play a new key, it's just gonna glide to the next one. Of course, I'm going really aggressive. So it's gonna take a long time to glide to the next note. All right, we just can do a, a tiny little bit. And we're gonna be getting that glide. Now, then you have the octave shift. Again, this is just gonna be one octave, two octaves up or down. Pretty simple. And then you have your bend depth. So if you're gonna be using your bend wheel, you can decide how much you wanna go up. If I'm uh, doing three and I play something and I go up, my bend is only gonna go up three semitones. But if I go all the way up like 12 and I go up right now, it's gonna go a whole octave. Right, so again, just pretty standard controls that you get on a lot or most synthesizers. Okay, we need to talk about the VCA and we need to discuss the envelopes that we get right here. So by default, of, co of course, you're going to be playing something and the sound goes out. And how it goes out is going to be controlled in terms of volume by the VCA, which is the voltage control amplifier. So we have a volume right here. If it's too loud, you can go down, you can just go up. And when you go up, notice that you have an, uh, an internal limiter. So if it's too loud, the limiter is going to kick in. Now, if you turn it off, it's just gonna, you know, it's gonna go a little bit, a little bit too wild. So I'm gonna stay at center. Now the most important part right here is the envelopes that we get right here at the top. So you can use a common ADSR just to control how, you know, how the sound goes out, or you can use an AR, which is, uh, you know, an AR. We have it right here in this section, or you can just bypass it. This means that now the synthesizer is not using an envelope to control how the sound goes out. So it's just playing a constant sound. And when we play a new key, it's just going to be changing to that pitch. But it's just constantly going in the background, right? It just never stops. Right. So again, this is something very common. Now, uh, the most common uh, control, or let's say envelope, that you get on a VCA is going to be the first one, the ADSR. Now, I'm not going to be explaining how uh, an ADSR works. I'm going to assume that you already know how it works. So we have a very common ADSR. And then we have something right here that it's uh, super interesting. We are using an ADSR to control how the volume goes out. We can do a little bit of attack. It's going to smoothly go up. Let me just go down on everything. It's going to smoothly go up and then it's going to die. If you want some decay, we are going to need to provide some decay. So now it's, it's going to go up and smoothly it's going to go down. And if we want to sustain it at some point, then we get the sustain. And then when, what happens when we release a key? If I release it, it's going to die right away. But if we want to add some smoothness to that, I'm going to release it. And then the sound is going to die smoothly. Again, it's just, yeah, a common ADSR. Okay, so um, let me just go like this for now. So you have your velocity. By default, it's going to be on min, which is going to be, it doesn't matter if I play soft or play really hard. And I'm, I'm talking about the keys. I'm using a MIDI controller right now. If I play soft, it's the same volume. If I play really hard, it's the same volume. It's always the same volume. So the velocity is going to decide how, you know, how we use this. Now, if you go really aggressive, it's super sensitive. If I play it really hard, you know, I'm going to need to really press the key to get it to full. If I play it soft, it's going to be very low in volume, in amplitude, right? So you can decide, you know, what's your velocity is going to be. If I play it soft, we're going to be getting less. If I play hard, it's going to be harder. All right. So again, uh, if you don't want any velocity on this envelope, you just need to go all the way uh, down to minimum. Now, the most interesting part of the ADSR is the ADSR repeat. So right now, if I play a key, it's just, you know, gonna be I'm just playing it and it's sustaining it, right? Now, if I go to the gate it right here and I play a key, I'm gonna do it with the mouse so you can see it. I'm gonna be playing this key. That is what happens. So what this does is going to use the LFO to re-trigger the envelope. But the, this only happens when you play a key and you're holding it, in this case, right? 
So you can still, you know, change the, uh, you know, the uh, envelope and it's gonna react to it. But what it does again is using the LFO speed to do it. So let me just maybe go down. I'm gonna be playing a key. And this is going to be the LFO. So you can go up in speed. And notice it's working, it's working in hertz. Or you can go slower. And you can sync it to the BPM of your tempo, uh, of your of your host, you know, your DAW. Alright. Super simple. Now, this is the gated. So, uh, in order for this to happen, we need to press and hold the key. Now, the auto is going to be the other, the other side. We don't need to play anything. I'm not pressing a key and it's already doing it. Right? It's going to do it for us. But what we can do in this mode, it's going to let us do this, but I can just play keys. And it's going to change the frequency because we are working with the oscillator's frequency. This is just opening and closing uh, the uh, the envelope, the ADSR, following the LFO. So if I go faster, it's going to be super fast. If I go slower, it's going to be slower. So then you have the other side, which is going to be the AR, the attack and release. And this, again, is just an envelope, just like the ADSR, but you don't get uh, the decay. You do get a sustain. So if I go to the VCA and I uh, stand on the uh, on the AR, now we are using this envelope instead of this envelope. And on this one, we do have a velocity, just like on this one. So if I go to min, we are not really using velocity. But this one has a sustain stage. We don't see it, we cannot control it, but we do. If I play a key, it's gonna go up. And for now, I'm just gonna use one single, uh, you know, oscillator. If I go up, if I play it, it's sustaining it, right? I'm holding it right here on the bottom. So we get a sustain. As soon as I release it, it's gonna die. But if I, if I do uh, uh, add a little bit of release, it's gonna slowly die. And if I go to a attack, it's gonna slowly go in. Now, why do you get to, uh, you know, to select two different envelopes? And this is because with the filters and the VCOs and then later the sequence, we can use uh, the envelopes as a modulation source. Now, the thing is that on some synthesizers, you only get one single envelope. So if you want to modulate something, maybe the filter or maybe the LFO, you, 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 all the time you just need to use one single envelope. On this one, you can choose. Maybe you want to use the AR to control how the volume goes out, but then you're gonna, you can choose maybe the ADSR to control the modulations. And now you're using two different envelopes. And just like I said before, in some other synthesizers, you just cannot use a different envelope for the VCA or maybe for the filters or so on and so on and so on. On this one, you can. Or maybe you want to use an ADSR or maybe just bypass it. And then right here on the, on the filter section, maybe you want to use an ADSR. And on this one, you use an AR. So again, the, the fact that you can bypass and have, uh, you know, that you have different options uh, when you want to select an envelope is just, you know, just a great, great thing. Okay, so let's talk about VCO modulation. Now, uh, first I'm gonna turn off the number two, I'm gonna go all the way down in the level. I'm just gonna be using the oscillator number one. And I'm using, I'm starting with a, you know, a clear patch, just a default patch. So as soon as I play it, we get something, but we, we just don't get any modulation. So you can do three different things, actually two different things. You have pitch modulation, and right here you can modulate uh, the pulse width. Now within the pitch modulation, you can use an LFO, you can use sample and hold, which is gonna be random, and then you can use an envelope or the VCO2, which is this one, to modulate the pitch. Okay, so let's just begin with the first one. Now it says w, uh, WHL, and then it says <laughs> DER. What the F is this? So right here, you need to choose your source. This is the first thing that you need to do. So if I'm standing right here, it's because it's using the LFO. Remember, we can go down and it's going to go slower. How hard, you know, how aggressive it's going to be. <laughs> You're going to go up and it's going to be really aggressive. So you need to decide how much you want right here. Maybe just a little bit is going to be enough. We're going to go faster. Right? And I guess it's dirt because it's direct. I, I guess. I'm just guessing right here. 
Now then you have the other side. When you, if you uh, command uh, click, it's gonna go to the default position, which is the mod wheel. So this is the mod wheel, and it's the same thing, it's the same idea. But instead of just, you know, doing it like this, which is gonna fire as soon as you play a key, you can go to the wheel, wheel section, and now notice that it's just not gonna fire. It only fires when you use the mod wheel. You don't have a mod wheel on this synthesizer, at least on the, the at least on the interface. But I am um, using a MIDI controller, a MIDI keyboard, and I'm going up on my mod wheel right now. If I go up, we're gonna be getting the same pitch modulation, right? So the main purpose is that you can do it manually, or you can use uh, the mod wheel to, to do it. Oh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go manually right now. If I play a key, we just get it. So the next modulation is going to be the LFO, it's still the LFO, but it's going to be a square, right? And then you get the sample and hold, and sample and hold is just random. And the uh, sample and hold in the synthesizer, we can see some of the options, we're going to talk about this in a minute, but the sample and hold uses the LFO to decide how fast it's going to be. So you still need to use the uh, LFO. If I go really aggressive, we're gonna be getting that R2D2 type of sound. A computer, I wanna say R2D2. R2D2. Alright, so this is the first, uh, you know, modulation that you get, which is gonna be LFO or, you know, sample and hold. And everything revolves around the LFO, even the sample and hold. I'm gonna go back to a new patch, and now we need to talk about this one. So this is the same idea, it's gonna be pitch modulation. You can go positive. And let me just turn off the oscillator number two. You can go positive on that pitch modulation. And now I'm going to be using the AR. So we keep uh, using the ADSR on the VCA right here. So if I do a little bit of a tag and maybe a little bit of release, that is that we get the modulation when I play a key. It's going up. And I'm going to be adding some release on the VCA so we can hear that it goes down when we release the keys. So it's just using, you know, the envelope to do the modulation. You can use the ADSR that you have right here at the top, or you just can use the AR, just like we are using it right now. Now you can go up, which it means that it's gonna go up in pitch, following whatever envelope you're using. Now if you go to the other side, to the negative side, it's gonna go down in pitch. And of course, if you go less aggressive, it's just gonna be not that aggressive. Alright, so by doing Command or Alt, it goes back to default, which is nothing. Now, the other option that you get is going to be the VCO2, this is the other source. If I go right here, whatever is that we use on the VCO2 is going to affect the pitch of, you know, the VCO1. If I play it and go up, it is that nothing happens. And this is because this is going to use the audio source of whatever comes out of the VCO2. So if VCO2 is doing nothing, you're not going to get anything. So if I go up and start bringing something, that is I'm getting it. And right here we start, you know, to getting some really crazy cool sounds. I'm gonna go back to a uh, default patch and we need to discuss the pulse width modulation. And by default, uh, I'm gonna go, you know, to VCO2 and go down in the uh, waveform and just getting the pulse. So this is, this will only work on the pulse waveform. It will not work on the sub octave, which is gonna be a lower pulse, but it doesn't work there. It only works on this waveform. So if I go up on the pulse width, we can manually make it more narrow. I guess you, you know, I guess you know this. And this is why we are standing on the DC. There's no modulation. We are doing it directly. Now then you can choose between an LFO. We can go to the LFO world and just have it modulate this with the LFO. Right. Or you can use an envelope, in this case you only get to choose the, uh, you know, the um, ADSR. And I'm gonna do maybe some decaying, some staining, some release, and I'm gonna use the AR as on the VCA. 
and is that we are getting it. Maybe I'm gonna go there. Just a little bit too quiet. There we go. Right, so pretty simple. You just get your pulse width. You can use an alpha or you can use an envelope just to modulate the pulse width. So I'm going to go back to a new patch and now we need to discuss what we can do with the VCO2. Now it's pretty much the same. It's just pretty much the same, but we do have some differences. I'm going to turn off the VCO1 and I'm just going to be staying on the VCO number two. And let's uh, go to this one and notice that we don't get to do pulse width modulation on the VCO2, but we can do pitch modulation with the LFO, just like we did before. We can still go to sample and hold and just get it. And if we don't want it, we just can, you know, go back and just use the mod wheel like I'm using it right now. Right? Super cool. Right? So again, just super simple. We already talked about this. Now then you have the other side, which is going to be is going to be uh, the pitch modulation with an envelope. And we have the same thing. You can use an ADSR right here, or maybe the AR. I'm gonna be using the AR just like that. And we are gonna be getting the pitch modulation. Now the other thing that you get right here is going to be VCO number one. And on this one, you can use the VCO two to do that pitch modulation with this. And on this one, you can use the VCO one. It kind of makes sense, right? So whatever is that we are doing, um, for now, let me go to a new patch. If I'm not using any of the audio level of the VCO one, it doesn't matter how much we do right here. Nothing is going to happen. We need to do something in terms of audio of the ECO one to get it. Still, you know, there's a tiny little thing. If you go to the uh, filter section, right here, it says VCO1 audio. So it says on or off. So this means that we can turn off the audio of the number one. So if we want to remove it, we just can remove it. And now the VCO1 is not going through the filter, right? So we are just like, you know, using it, but turning it off. So we cannot hear it. You're just using it as a modulator. This is why, you know, the uh, this is so cool. We can do whatever we want right here and we'll only use it as a modulator for the VCO number two. Maybe we can go really low. And now we are using it as an LFO. You know, VCO number one is an LFO. Maybe I want to use the triangle. And then we get it. Now remember that we can, if I play a low key, it's gonna, it's gonna go really, really slow. If I play a high key, it's super fast. We can turn off the keyboard from the, for the uh, VCO one, and now the LFO is gonna be constant on pretty much all the different keys that we play. And this is like the main purpose of this keyboard control. I'm gonna start with the new patch. We need to talk about this section, which is gonna be oscillator sync. And this is gonna be pretty straightforward because it's just a classic oscillator sync. Now you have two modes. This is, you know, the uh, the weird part. Now the mode B uh, is gonna be the classic oscillator sync. How this works is that the number two, the VCO2 is the master and the VCO1 is the slave. If I go all the way down in the amplitude of the uh, VCO2 and I play something, which is, uh, we are getting the oscillator one, and I'm gonna be going to mode B. This is the classic oscillator sync. If I go up and pitch, we can see that the VCO1 is following the VCO2. Again, so the, the VCO2 is gonna force to restart uh, to the cycle of the VCO number one. And this is by default, this is you know the whole cycle, right? So this is the, by default, the good old common oscillator sync. Now, when you go to the mode A, it's pretty much the same idea. It's still, you know, doing that oscillator sync, but it's a, a little bit different. So when the VCO2 is going to force the VCO1 to restart, it's still, you know, the same thing, but it's going to be turned off for half of each of the VCO cycles. So it's just kind of a half of it. And we can actually see it. If I stand right here on the fine tune, I'm going to go back there again. I play a key, we are using a pulse. This is that we are getting no difference. It only changes when we start to change the fine tune or maybe using, you know, different waveforms or using something else. But if I stand um, right here, it's not changing. If I go to mode A, it changes right away. 
Now, instead of using a pulse, I'm gonna go to a triangle. Let's, let's see what happens with the triangle. I'm gonna go to mode B, we just get a triangle, right? We are using the same frequency. We are not, you know, changing frequencies. So we just get a triangle. But on the mode A, we just don't get it. We get something else. We get kind of a, I would say a trisaw, something like that. Looks like that. And it's because it's doing it for half of the cycle. So we get a different waveforms. Now still, you know, it's still oscillator sync, but you can use this, you know, to explore and maybe just get a different sound. Remember that using the audio level of the oscillator 2 and whatever it is that you do right here is going to change whatever it is that you get, even when you go up in frequency. Alright, maybe a little bit of modulation. If I go to mode B, it's different. Off is that we are not doing sync and mode A sounds different. So this is something that again, you need to, when you're trying to do something and you want to do all sort of sync, go to the mode B because it's the classic, but maybe you just want to try the mode A and see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the new patch and now we need to move on. We know everything about VCO number two and VCO number one and you know, the envelopes. And we got this covered, you know, we just need to discuss the remaining parts. Now the VCF, uh, we need to talk about this. It's a pretty simple thing. We get a four pole, 24 dB per octave. And then you get your FC and your Q. So this is the cutoff and this is the resonance. This is what we know today as cutoff and resonance. If I play something, we get it. I'm gonna start cutting and we can see that it's gonna start cutting pretty hard. All right, so super cool. If I go up in the Q, we get that peak and it's, you know, we get it, we get the resonance right there. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand around, around here. Maybe there so we can, we can see the peak. So we have two different modulation sources, you know, to modulate the cutoff, which is gonna be the FC. And uh, we have a, we can use an LFO. Maybe we see it right there. We can use the uh, square or we can use, you know, the sample in the hole. And we already know this, right? We, we've been using it on the oscillators. If you don't want to use this, you can do command and go all the way back. You still have your wheel, so nothing is going to happen until you use your mod wheel. Right? Okay, what else? Uh, then we have the other way of modulation, which is, you know, the good old uh, common modulation we get on a filter. And it's going to be the ADSR. And again, I'm going to be using maybe the AR, and I can keep using the ADSR for this. And I'm going to be doing more cutoff. Maybe I'm going to be doing a little bit of attack and a little bit of release. And then we are able to do that modulation with the envelope. And this is something again that you uh, get on pretty much all synthesizers or at least subtractive synthesizers. Right? You can go into negatives. Maybe I'm going to go the other way. And it's going to use that envelope instruction in a negative fashion. Now, another interesting thing is that you can use the VCO number one as a modulation source. And it's gonna, you know, it could get really wild. Depends on what you're doing on the oscillator number one. And since we know that trick that we can turn, we can just turn it off. I just can turn it off that one and just use the oscillator number two, right? And then go up on this one and we can start, be we can start getting it. We can go down to LFO. Maybe I'm gonna go up. And we're just, again, using the LFO number one as a modulator. And that's it, you know, pretty much in the filter. It's a pretty simple filter. Now, then you have your keyboard control, right? If I go all the way down and to off, the, uh, the lower keys are gonna sound super, <laughs> super dark, and the higher keys, super dark. But, you know, uh, by default, it's gonna be on uh, 100%. Higher keys are gonna be bright, lower keys, consistent. And you can still, you know, go up. And the higher keys are gonna be brighter, because the filter's gonna open more, right?
Right, so let's talk about these sample and hold right here, these options that you get right there. So uh, sample and hold, by default, it's just random. And how it, uh, you know this works is that the, uh, the sample and hold is going to take snapshots from an unpredictable sound source. So that's why we get this random type of sound. Right? We get this. Now the LFO again decides how fast we take the snapshots. And it's going to take it from an unpredictable sound source, which is going to be noise. And this is what, right, why right here you have noise by default. It's just, you know, the good old, you know, you know, source for a sample and hold. So uh, you get to choose noise or some other things. Now, it depends on what you're selecting as a source. Uh, it's going to be predictable or non-predictable. Noise is unpredictable. Uh, it's, sometimes it's going to be up, sometimes it's going to be down. But you can use maybe the VCO number two as a modulation source. So now it's going to be a little bit more predictable. The thing is that it's going to be using, it's going to use the audio level of the number two in this case. So I need to get some sound. And notice that the modulation is pretty predictable. And it's going up and down, just like a triangle. Right? If I use VCO number one, Maybe I can get this sample and hold right here. I'm going to go all the way down and I'm going to turn off the audio of the number one. So we are just going to be getting the oscillator number two. But I want to do some pitch modulation with the sample and hold. Right now we have no audio level, so I want to use that triangle. And notice that now the, the modulation, or, you know, the uh, random, is that random is more predictable, let's say. Maybe if I go down... If I change it to noise, you're gonna notice that it's uh, completely different. And VCO number one. A lot more predictable, right? So again, you can choose what it is that you want to, you know, work with. If I go back to noise, then you have your glide. So notice that the changes of the sample and hold are super, super hard, right? It's up or down, and it's really harsh. So this is going to smooth the changes, and instead of going up and down really hard, it's just going to smooth it out. And we can see it right here in the spectrum. If we go down, notice that how the frequencies are changing. If I use the glide, it's gonna kind of slide through the changes. All right. Now, another thing that uh, we have, and I didn't tell you about this, is going to be the LFO delay. So if I'm using, um, I'm using an LFO, let's say on the oscillator number one, just to get a little bit of pitch modulation, you can add some delay. If I play a key, what is it? we don't get it. And it's gonna slowly fade in. This is why we get the, the LFO delay. I play a key, and it's gonna wait for, you know, around maybe two seconds, almost two seconds, 1.8, 1.9. I play, it waits, and then it will fade in. And this is something really cool that, you know, you, uh, you can use when you play something. Right? So I'm not holding the keys, I'm just playing. I'm just playing it, you know, playing the keys fast, but I'm releasing them fast. If I hold one of them, the LFO will kick in and it will give us that modulation. Right, so maybe it's too slow, maybe I'm gonna go something like that. Right, so this means that by holding, when you hold and sustain the, the, the notes, uh, you know, the LFO is gonna kick in and you're gonna get your pitch modulation. But if you play very staccato, you will, you will never get it. That's, you know, the main point. Now, we pretty much covered the whole panel. The only the, the thing left is that, is that you have noise. Right? If I go down right here, you can hear the noise. Right? And it's a pretty mild noise. It's not a very intrusive type of, uh, type of noise. So, sounds cool. Okay, so uh, if I go back to a new patch, now we need to discuss all the options that we have right here. The keyboard modes and the polyphony. Now, it's pretty simple. You have three choices, right? Just three choices. You get mono, you get duo, and you get poly. So when you're standing on mono, this means one key at a time. So if I play a key, it's going to be playing that one. If I play a new key, 
Nothing is gonna happen. If I play lower key, this is going to do it. So this means that uh, when I play a higher key, it's not going to change that pitch. But if I play a low, it will. This is how it works on this synthesizer. All right. So uh, then you have your duo. Now, duo is a little bit uh, different from, of course, mono, mono. Now, this duo means that when you're playing one key at a time, both oscillators are going to be playing, right? So if I play it, I'm getting both. If I go down on the oscillator number two, we can clearly hear that uh, we are, you know, we are not uh, triggering or using the oscillator number two. Now, on duophonic, it means that if you play two keys, one oscillator is going to be playing one key and the other oscillator will play the other key. So you can, you know, play two keys at a time. When you play one, both oscillators play. But if now, if I play a new key, that is that we get something different. We get a higher pitch. So in the case of, you know, how it works on this synthesizer is that the lowest uh, note um, you know, whatever it is that you're playing, the lowest key is going to be played by the VCO number two, and the highest is going to be VCO number one. So if I play uh, this key, both oscillators are playing the same note, right? Now, if I play a higher key, this one is going to be controlled by the VCO number one, and the lower one is going to be played by the VCO number two, right? So this is how it works on this synthesizer. And this is, you know, so be, you, because you can just, you know, play a key and then... Play something at the top with the other keys. Now still, this is a duophonic type of sound, so the envelopes are kind of a being re We are re-triggering the envelopes and... It's not, it's not polyphonic, it's that the, notes, the note sustains, because we are sustaining the keys, right? So, this is how it, you know, how it works by default, you know, the original synthesizer. You get the mono, and you get the duo. This so is how, how it works. Now, but still, you know, you get your poly, so you can use this as a polyphonic instrument, which is something super cool. So, you can do chords. And this is, you know... The difference, or the magic, that you get with plugins that you cannot get, you know, with old synthesizers. You get a recreation of something old, but then you get a little bit more power. And just maybe just turn it into something else. Now, uh, right here at the bottom, it says polynum of voices. Voices. Uh, so this is how you know how many voices you can play. If you select two and you're standing on poly, this is just like kind of a you know you're just using two voices. You can play two keys at a time. If I play a third one, it's gonna steal one voice. So you just only can play two. So if you want to uh, play a chord, use more voices, right? You can do up to sixteen voices. Now, the other, on the other side, you get the unison, and uh, you can uh, use unison only with duo and with mono. You cannot use it with poly. So if I go to unison and I turn it off and I'm uh, turning on, and I'm standing on poly, and I play a key, you know, you're not getting it. Right? We are just not getting it. So if I go to mono, we are getting it. Then depends on the number of voices that you're using, it's going to be louder or just, you know, less loud. So if you don't know how unison vo works, is that it's going to detune all the voices, going to be playing uh, all the different voices on the same key that you're playing, which is going to be, you know, I don't know, C in this case. And we are playing four voices stacked on top of each other on the same key. But we can detune them and get this big sound. If you detune too much, you're getting this beehive type of sound. This is just, you know, how unison works. Now, you can uh, use up to two voices. You can use up to four, or you can go really aggressive and use a lot of voices, like eight or sixteen, which is, in my my opinion, way too aggressive. And notice that uh, as I, as you go up on the number of voices when you use uh, unison, the limiter right here is gonna you're gonna be slamming it. So if I uh, play maybe on not unison, it's fine, right? But if I go to unison, it's gonna go louder. So we are really slamming, and we can hear it. We can hear the limiter just pushing the sound down. Right? So maybe in this case, you're going to need to go down in volume so you don't slam your limiter. Now, you can turn it off if you want, 
I'm just gonna go really loud. But you need to control your volumes in this case. Right. So this is the main panel. This is how it works. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the new patch and now I'm gonna go to the sequence. Now the sequencer, it's pretty simple and it's super fun. Now you have eight different steps and you have two different sequences. And you can run some modulations and you have some other options in, you know, in how you want to uh, run your modulations. But uh, right now, just to make it easier, I'm gonna turn off everything right here and we're gonna learn how this uh, section works. All right, so you have eight steps. If I play something, you know, nothing is gonna happen. So you need to trigger the sequence in some fashion and you have two different options, the keyboard gate or start and stop. Now keyboard gate right now it's off. So if I turn it on, this means that when I play a key, the gate is gonna start the sequence. So each of the step is going to each of the steps is going to trigger the envelope. We're gonna we can talk about this in a minute. But if I play it, you know the sequence plays, and when I stop playing a key, the sequence stops and restarts. That's how it works. So this is one way of using this. Now how fast it goes is going to be this rate. If I go slow, it's gonna go slower. Or if I go super fast, it's gonna go faster. Right, so you can sync it to whatever uh, tempo you have in your DAW. Right, again, super simple. Or if you wanted to, and this is off, you can do a step by step by clicking the step button. And you just advance it manually, right? You just go one by one. Now, the other uh, option, instead of playing a key to trigger the sequence, you can click on start and stop. And this will just start the sequence. And you don't need to play a key for the sequence to start. It's just gonna, you know, start and keep going on. Until you, of course, you just turn it off. If I play a key, it's gonna change the frequencies, but it's not, you know, restarting the sequence. This is a very important thing. But it's not restarting it. Okay. If I click it again, it's going to stop. Okay, so now we know how to run the sequence. Now we need to talk about this section. You have the sequence A and you have the sequence B. Now the sequence A, it says re-trick. Now how this works is that you have eight different steps and each of the steps, what we'll do, it will re-trigger or trigger the envelope, right? It's gonna like opening and closing at the gate because, you know, if it goes slower, each step is just gonna do that. That's why we get this, you know, playing a note on each step. So, the uh, sequence A, it says re-trig because it's in charge of doing this. The sequence B has no idea how to re-trigger or how to trigger an envelope. Has no idea about gates. Now, when I go to the knob, notice it says sequence A, step one, CV, and then it says C2. Now, it says uh, we we get semitones because right here is on quantize. If we uh, remove quantize, it's going to be in control voltage. It's going to be in voltage. We can talk about that in a minute. But right now, it's C2. Now, what, we, what I can do, I can go all the way to down, go all the way down, and it's going to say off. So this means that on this step, we are not triggering anything. So if I remove the first two and I start turning off steps, we're going to be getting a sequence and we're gonna skip some of the steps. We, we are playing rest. Right? So this is how it works. You just turn it off. If, I, if you want to turn everything off, I go all the way down and everything is off. And then you, you need to just decide what you want to do. Now, since we are not modulating pitch, it doesn't matter how up I go on the knob, right? It's just gonna be triggering this. Cool, right? So, super easy. Now, the sequence B has no idea how to do this. So, notice that we have volts right here. And it's because it says non-quantize. So, if it's, if the quantize is off, we are going to be using volts. And if uh, it says quantize, it's just like here. We use semitones. And this is, you know, we are, we are getting, we get the, the quantize option. Uh, so, if we want to modulate the pitch, we know exactly on which pitch we are going. Or we are landing, right? If, if not, just using voltages is just a little bit hard. You just you need to use a, a tuner pedal or something like that. So that's it. This is how it works. You can decide to use the keyboard gate or just, you know, start and 
run the sequence and then decide which step is going to be playing. So this is the first part. Now the second part, for now I'm just going to turn all, all the steps on, right? Everything is on. Now you can decide the number of steps. Right now by default it's eight. I can do four if I wanted to, six, whatever. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do four. And then you have your other options. So all of this section, let me stop it. Everything that we have right here is going to be using whatever values you decide to use. And it's going to modulate something. And it's going to be the pitch of VCO1, VCO2. Then you get the VCF, the filter, or it can modulate the amp, you know, the, uh, the volume that goes out. I'm going to start with a new patch and go back. And we are again, back to the beginning. Now. I'm going to be going and just turning everything off. I'm going to start with maybe the VCA. So this is what it does. It's going to take whatever it is that you do right here. And in this case, it's going to be like a, make an exit. I go down in volume and I go up on this one. Notice that now we get accents. I'm going to make it more obvious. So this is, again, it's an accent. It's just going to go louder. It's like going up in volume every time we reach that step. So this is the VCA. Now on the other side, we have the VCF. If I do a little bit of resonance, maybe something like that, I can use the VCF and it's gonna be modulating the filter up in this case. Maybe I'm just doing too much resonance. All right, so this is, you know, again, the VCF. If I turn it off, then the other thing that we have is going to be the pitch. And we can do the one, uh, maybe modulate the number one and keep the number two on the same spot. Or just modulate both at the same time. In this case, again, we remember we can select, and I'm going to go a little bit brighter right here. And we can see right here which key, which key we are going to be playing. Right, that's, that's the whole point. Right. Now, there's one thing that you need to notice. If I go to one vault, notice that the effect is a little bit, you know, is a less of effect. Two volts is going to be more. So if I go to five volts, this means when we are doing quantize, is that we are applying more voltage. So if I go down on all of them, maybe not that much, maybe a little bit, it means that we have more range. If I go all the way up, it's going to be super high in pitch. So we could have something going on and then just maybe, maybe decide, if, maybe say that this is too aggressive and I want to go down. Maybe I can go to two volts. It's just going to be a little bit less aggressive. So all this, this works with the VCA, VCF and everything else. And one volt, it's just going to be less. All right, so this is how it works. You just can modulate VCO1 independently from VCO number two. Maybe I'm going to go do a little bit of filter modulation. And there you go, that, that's your sequence. I'm going to start with a new patch and I'm going to go back to the sequence. If I run it again, we can use the sequence B to do something else. Remember the A knows how to re-trigger, so maybe I want to remove some steps and add some silences, some rests. And now I can use the sequence V, I can even quantize it and do the pretty much the same thing. Maybe I want to do a little bit of VCF and I want to modulate the VC01 and we can easily do it with the sequence V. And I'm just going randomly right here. Now, the effects are, you know, they, they play a big part right here. Um, right now I'm going to two volts, I'm gonna go to five. Now, if I uh, turn on a little bit of reverb, <laughs> it's just gonna make everything a little bit better. Maybe a ping pong. Right? Maybe a little bit of course. And how different it sounds, right? But this is what you can do. You decide how aggressive you're going to be going, you know, with the range. You can quantize it or not and just go in volts or go in uh, semitones. And you can modulate pitch, filter, and VCA. Now, 
I'm still gonna go. I'm gonna go to a new patch and show you the final thing, which is gonna be this attenuator that we have right here. So let's say that I want to go maybe all the way up in pitch on this one and this one and this one, and I run. It. It's gonna be something like that, right? And we are modulating the pitch of the one and the two. Now all the way up, it means it's going up in pitch, right? We are starting down and then we go up in pitch, and it's because we have the positive. Now, as I go down, it's going to start doing less of whatever voltage that we, we are doing right there. So we can attenuate it, that's what we are doing. Now, if you're standing in zero, it's no modulation. Nothing is going to happen. Oh, there we go. Right? Now, if I go to the negative side, instead of going up in pitch, it's going down in pitch. And you can do the same thing right here. Maybe I'm going to be doing something to the oscillator number two. And now you start getting, you know, combinations of different things. This one is going positive and this one is going negative. And again, you know, the reverb is just going to make everything a little bit better. And this is, again, really, really cool. Now, remember that when you're going into the uh, in-betweens, you're not, not staying on the, uh, a precise semitone, let's say. You're just gonna, you know, be a little bit detuned, so you just need to check your tuning. But it works, fine. Okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna just tune it on, and just go back to whatever we had from before. So this is how the sequencer works. It's a pretty simple sequencer, but it's super creative, and it's super fun. And notice that we are doing this with a default patch, and with a little bit of effects, it sounds really cool. Now you get... Uh, different effects. I'm just gonna, you know, fool around with them. Uh, you get two type of saturation. And you have a fuss. You can decide your tone and your level. Now again, all of this is just completely up to you. I'm gonna do a little bit of tube saturation. Now you have a phaser. You can decide the stages. 8, 12, 2. Fine. And your depth and your resonance and the speed, and you can even sync it if you wanted to. Now then you have a flanger, and you have a course. And just a course to make everything wider. You can go up in rate, you can even sync it. And when you're using course, you're just gonna decide the depth. If you're using flanger, you can decide the delay and the resonance. In this case, I'm just gonna decide course. And notice that you also get your waveform. So they're just pretty cool effects, right? So Pretty cool effects. Now then you get an echo, and the echo is cool. You have three different types. You have the ping pong, the tape, or digital. I'm gonna use tape, I like tape. And you can even drive it. You can sync it. Maybe we're gonna do, I don't know, one eight dot it, something like that. And just to do a little bit of something else right here, I'm gonna be going down and doing a little bit of resonance. And just make it, I'm gonna make it a little bit more staccato, let's say. I'm just fooling around. At this point, we are just pretty much done with the, you know, with the whole, uh, whole synthesizer. Sounds really cool. Let's do more spread. There we go. And then, last but not least, we can do, uh, you know, we can do reverb. You have a bunch of, uh, you know, different types, and you even get the, uh, you know, the uh, trademark, like uh, the, the galactic one, which is, you know, the uh, Cherry Audio. And I love this one. I use the, you know, the standalone plugging. Makes everything super lush and big. And remember that you can play different keys and it will transpose whatever it is that you're doing. Alright? Alright. Alright, so it's a super fun and creative uh, you know, little synth.
All right, so we are done with the synth. So hopefully you liked all of this and you learned how to use the synthesizer. And if you liked it, remember to like and subscribe. And if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee, you can go to the links at the description and you have links for pay uh, PayPal, you have Patreon and you have YouTube. Thanks. All right, so see you on the next one.